Hello, and thank you for joining us for Season 5, Episode 8 of Adventures in Fly Time. And now, here's your host, Joe Cornwall. Hello and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Fly Tying. I'm your host, Joe Cornwall. Today we have a very interesting fly and I want to tell you a little bit of a story about how I came upon this fly. Some of you may know that I'm kind of a misplaced New Englander, moved to Ohio from Massachusetts back in 1984. Sometime around 1986 or 87, somewhere in there, I found a copy of Harry Murray's book, Fly Fishing for Stream Smallmouth Bass, and of all places at an estate sale. I remember reading that and thinking how cool it was. I just started getting into fishing the creeks for smallmouth bass. And in that book was one of Harry Murray's great flies called the Strymph, a fly that's just a spectacularly versatile pattern that you can fish in a lot of places. Well, fast forward a couple of years and I'm fishing up on the uh, uh, Flat Rock River in uh, Michigan, just outside of Grand Rapids, and I stopped into the Great Lakes fly tying shop up there. And in the bins of the shop, I saw the Murray's Strymph for sale. And I was totally blown away by what I saw in that fly. I immediately decided, since I hadn't tied flies, there just wasn't room for me to bring my fly tying materials when I moved to Ohio, to repurchase a vise, repurchase some fly tying materials. And this is the first fly that I tied after living in the Midwest when I really got serious about fishing for smallmouth bass. Let's take a look at Murray's strength. Murray's strength is a unique pattern. It uses a tail of ostrich plumes. Now these ostrich hurls are used because in the water they have a tendency to stick together and move in one piece, which makes this fly really swim. And it really was designed originally uh, almost as an imitation of a helgramite, but it can be tied in a number of different colors. Cream, where it's very similar to a, a shanks white minnow, black, olive, or in this case, natural rabbit, which is one of my favorites, using uh, a gray ostrich plume for a tail, and then we're going to use a natural rabbit fur for a dubbing that you see there. And we're going to do something very unique. We're going to apply this rabbit in a dubbing loop and then trim it. And we're using a uh, mallard flank feather as the hackle up in front. We're going to tie this fly on a size 4 Daiichi 1750 4XL ring eye streamer hook and this is going to be weighted with a few turns of lead wire and we're using a gray 140 denier pre-waxed thread. So let's get started on this fly. It's a very interesting tie using some really unique techniques that I think will be a lot of fun. Let's get that hook set up inside of our vise. Now the very first step that you want to do with this particular fly is to weight the pattern. Because of the rabbit fur and the way that it's designed, this really does need to be a little bit weighted. Otherwise, it really doesn't sink all that well. Uh, and even with a little bit of lead, you're still going to want to really soak this fly. Now I'm using a .025, I believe, lead wire. And I'm going to put on about eight or nine turns. And you'll notice that I'm putting the lead on uh, about the same distance back from the eye as the actual lead is wide. And you can see why, because from this point up, I have to finish off this head and I have to finish off that hackle. So we're going to leave that thread right about there. And you don't, of course, cut this thick lead. You just sort of pull it loose and it'll come out. Wiggle a little bit and that'll stretch it and also kind of taper it there at the end. Now, here's a little trick that I learned when it comes to putting on lead. Start by using a wrapping lock, wrap back to the front of the thread, push the, th the lead up to that front and hold that piece of thread tight while you build a little bit of a ramp. Now, relax that tail of thread and that'll keep the thread from going inside of those lead windings, cutting the thread and spreading the lead out. You can see that that kind of locks it right in there. And I can build a ramp at both ends with that thread. Now I can go back and I can cover the entire lead with a thin base of thread. Okay, Stop your thread right there. That's a good point to tie in your ostrich plumes. Now for this fly, you want to use about 20 ostrich hurls. So you can count them out. Not a, good, uh, not a bad idea until you get used to exactly how much it takes. But on most ostrich plumes, 20 hurls is going to be about an inch and a half or two inches. Even up those tips. Now Harry Murray recommends that you actually break off these tips because 
they tend to be very fragile anyway, and that's a good way to even them up. Now, what I want to do is I want that tail to be about the length of the hook back from there, so that's my tie-in point. I'm going to tie it in right behind the lead, bring my thread back to a point right above the barb. Tail is ready to go. We can go ahead and clip away the rest of that. We don't need that anymore. Now, this body on this fly is made with rabbit fur in a dubbing loop. So let's go ahead and form our dubbing loop. Come back to a point just a little bit in front of the last tie-in. Give yourself a good eight or nine inches of thread. You may even have to make two dubbing loops on a particularly large hook like this 4XL. Wrap backwards so I'm locking in both ends of that dubbing loop thread as you can see. And then bring your thread forward in front of the lead so that it's out of the way. Next step that you want to take, and this is kind of important, is you want to go ahead and wax one side of that leg because that's really going to help. This can be kind of a messy fly. Take your dubbing twirler, and I like the single hook type, a shepherd's hook type, and get that there. Now, we're going to do this in a few different stages. We're going to start putting in a little bit of the rabbit fur. Start by cutting off a bunch of rabbit fur, about like that. Open up that dubbing loop. Slide that in, and you want to kind of spread that out a little bit, okay? There you go. There's the first bunch of rabbit fur. Now we're going to continue to do that exact same thing all the way down the hook shank, trying to use the same portion of the rabbit because you're going to get some beautiful natural colors. Don't take out the under fur and don't take out the guard hairs because that's what makes this fly so neat is the way that it's designed is using all of that material and trust me when I tell you a lot of it's going to come out anyway as you tie this fly. This is definitely a messy fly so have the vacuum cleaner ready because uh, you're going to be in trouble when you're done with this one but trust me it is worth it. This is a really cool pattern. So we're going to go ahead and finish putting this rabbit fur. One of the things that you got to do is because this rabbit fur is going to come out in clumps is you have to kind of spread that out as best you can, make it even, bring it in so that it's about halfway through, get a good chenille rope of this dubbing. And once again, we may end up having to make two of these chenille ropes to fill, to fill up the entire fly. Then using your dubbing twister, start twisting that down until it's nice and tight and standing out like a fur chenille. You could actually do this in one of the uh, episodes coming up. We're going to be showing you how to use a dubbing twister with wire to make dubbing brushes. So you can see that I'm just going to clean up that a little bit, the spots where it's a little bit loose. You can throw some of that dubbing aside. That makes great uh, uh, dubbing for nymphs and things like that if you don't want to waste that. Uh, rabbit skins themselves are relatively inexpensive, so this is a great fly to tie because you can get a lot of material out of a single rabbit skin for, I don't know, five or ten dollars or whatever they cost at the fly tying shop. You can tie, you can uh, cut off your own zonker strips and do all kinds of neat things. Now, once I've got that ready to go. I'll start by bringing that on just like a big piece of chenille. Bringing it up forward and each turn I'm stroking that rabbit fur back. In the water this fly has got just more action than you can possibly imagine. It's just all over the place. Shimmy, shake, move. It absolutely comes alive in the water. So go ahead and wrap that dubbing loop all the way up covering the lead, bringing it up to the point where your thread is waiting for you, and that'll be the tie-off point for the fly where you'll also be able to put in your hackle for the front. And there you can see I did just the right amount of dubbing, I think, for this. Tie that off with a few th tight thread wraps. Once again, I like to double back, so now that's truly locked in there. That's never going to come out. And perhaps even use a dubbing brush to get a little bit of that under fur out. because You really want this standing out like that. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that off with a half hitch and we're going to trim using a curved pair of scissors 
this rabbet. You have to, of course, get rid of that thread, otherwise it's simply not going to work for you. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, just like trimming deer hair, using a curved pair of scissors, cutting this into kind of a cone shape. Big old carrot of fur is what this is going to end up being. Don't get too obsessive with it because unlike deer hair, this fly is supposed to be really buggy. Now, as you might guess, because of the name strymph, this is a combination streamer and nymph. This can be fished high sticked. This can be fished under an indicator. This can be fished retrieved as a streamer fly can. It's really quite flexible in how you're going to use it. And you can see that I've got that body nicely tapered there. So I've got a little bit of a carrot shape to it. That'll give me a little bit of a bait fish imitation. Now let's go ahead and reattach our thread at the front. Wrap back to the point where we just tied that off. Return to the deadly scissors that just cut me in the hand. Now we want to use, and if you're using the olive, you can use a large olive hen hackle. Uh, you can use wood duck. In this case, I'm going for almost a minnow type effect. Uh, so I'm going to use a nice piece of mallard. So you want to come down here to where this is thin enough to be wrapped. That's the point at which I want to clip that away. Strip that back. Now I'm ready to tie that in and wrap my hackle. I'll go ahead and three or four really tight wraps to hold that stem in and bring my thread up to the front and let it hang right there. Now, by holding the hackle up, I tie that of course with the shiny side up, almost as though I were making a, a tent wing across the back of it, stroke all of those hackles back towards me and that's going to allow them to lay down and you don't need a lot of this hackle, really just two or three wraps, depending on the length of it. You're not going to get much, but this is more or less um, to provide just a little bit of a breakup in the pattern, a little bit more um, uh, motion in the fly while you're fishing it. Go ahead and tie that off. A couple of tight wraps of thread right there. Clip off the excess. Now. Wrap your thread head on there. Make sure that you bind down those butts really good. And a whip finish. And then the last step, coat that with a little bit of Sally Hansen's hard as nails. It's actually a pretty easy fly, a little bit messy, but a pretty easy fly. And you can see it has a nice mottled color. There's a lot going on there. It's got great action in the water. Uh, this is a fly that, at one point in time, this is a fly I carried just a box of these. Try it in olive, black, natural rabbit, and white rabbit with a white tail. Don't add any flash. This is a great clear water pattern. Smallmouth will crush it. Trout will crush it. Largemouth will crush it. You're going to love this fly, Harry Murray Strength. Thanks for joining us on Adventures in Fly Tying. I'm your host, Joe Cornwall. We'll see you next month. Till then, keep those lines wet.